Welcome in. I am the Crypto Bull God. And in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about interest rates. The Federal Reserve interest rate announcement is set to take place this Wednesday on July 26th. And I think it's very important for everyone to understand what the data says. On this channel, this is a data-driven analysis channel. We use the data to make informed decisions, no guarantees, probabilistic views. And that's what we do moving forward. We use the data to try to make uh, as best and educated guess as we can in terms of what is going to transpire in the coming weeks and months ahead. Now, what I'm going to be sharing with you is actually a condensed version of a portion of a live stream from back in June after the Federal Reserve had announced during, at that point, when Chairman Powell came out, they announced they were pausing interest rates. And historically, what the data tells us once the Federal Reserve comes out and pauses interest rates, you will note that during this clip, I reiterate that you have a choice. You can either choose to listen to the words of politicians and those in charge, or you can allow the data to speak for itself. Now, while this while this clip is roughly one month old, it is extremely relevant to today. Many of you may have missed this live stream. It was sort of baked into one of my daily live streams that I do every single weekday, all in the charts. You can catch that by clicking the bell icon to receive all notifications. It's a TA-driven live stream that I do on crypto. And I felt that many of the viewers who missed that segment, or as a refresher, I think it would be very good uh, to stay keenly aware of what it means and what we can anticipate most likely on Wednesday. If you appreciate the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, drop me a comment, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon for notifications. You can find me on Twitter, you can find me on YouTube, Insta even Instagram for a little gym motivation, as well as trading view. One word, whoop, crypto bull god. Just a quick disclosure that none of what I'm sharing is financial advice. I'm simply looking to educate and to help others through sound technical analysis. We're all big boys and big girls, so we can make our own personal financial decisions. With that being said, let's get into a very important video. Here is the legend key. You know when you put a chart together, you create a legend key? Orange is a, a federal, okay, and we're looking at federal funds right here. We looked at this before, right? An orange horizontal line means that the Federal Reserve has paused interest rates, okay, which is the point we're at now. Red means that the Federal Reserve has signaled that they're going to decrease interest rates. The green horizontal line indicates that the Federal Reserve has ceased decreasing rates, and we they've ceased decreasing rates, and purple is signaling that the Federal Reserve is beginning to increase rates. Now, the purple is not shown for a reason. When I had the purple on here, I felt like the, 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 this chart was getting too busy. I think the most important thing for the purposes of our conversation, and I think you would agree with me on this, is to understand where are we at today and what is most likely moving forward. And what we're going to do for that information is we're going to look at the prior three times in history and... Is it prior three times? Yes. We're going to take a look at the prior three times in history we were at a similar point in time as of today. And that is the orange horizontal line. The orange horizontal line is at a point, let me explain this very clearly, after the Federal Reserve was done increasing rates, so we've gone through a period where they've increased rates and now they've paused. Okay, now they've paused. Now, each of the th three prior times, what has happened after a Fed rate pause has been a decrease in interest rates. Again, it doesn't matter what someone is telling you. It doesn't matter what the chairman is telling you, okay? There are plenty of times you can go back in history and whether you look at, the, whether you look at what's going on in the UK when they indicated they were, gonna they were gonna stop increasing interest rates to like I think 2025 and then they started increasing rates at an astronomical rate and that's a shit show in the UK. Same thing here. The Federal Reserve signaled they didn't see rate increases coming for the foreseeable future, and then we started increasing rates at a historical rate. So I would not, what I would, and I've said this so many times before in the, in the past week and a half, I would offer you this suggestion. Look at data. Don't listen to someone's words. Thumbs up for everyone new tuning in. Yeah, hide the chat, give a thumbs up. Appreciate the support. 
I would suggest that you look at hard data. The data is telling you based on the pa on past history what is most likely going to happen. If you want to listen to people, go for it. I'm just giving you a suggestion uh, as a data scientist guy. Okay, I'm a math guy. I'm an actuary. This is what I do. Okay, you can tell me everything you want to tell. Me. It's like think about it this way. If you were hypothetically. If you were in a dysfunctional relationship and um, this person said that they were going to be different again, they were going to be different. They were going to be, they weren't going to be mentally unstable and they wouldn't do the things they did in the past. But then it happened again and it happened again and it happened again, right? Shouldn't you rely on history to tell you that there's probably like a 95% chance that they're going to tell me this thing in this moment and it's just not going to hold true, right? Shouldn't you use history to tell you that, right? Or do you really want to go out on a limb and believe and trust someone to see if they're going to be different the fifth time around? Up to you, okay? Um, so in this case, right now, what I'm signaling here, and we'll get to these horizontal lines here in a moment, this orange horizontal line representing the, and this is a two-week chart, by the way, on, I should signal this. This is a two-week chart on the NASDAQ, okay? What's up, Nick? Ah, uh, Japanese tours. Um, okay, this is a two-week chart. And this candlestick represents the time frame where the Federal Reserve indicated that they were going to pause interest rates. So now I what I want to do, why thank you, Donna. You are learning a lot from my discussions. Well, ding, ding, ding. Chicken wait, wait. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the support. Have you hit the thumbs up? Donna Perry, did you hit the thumbs up? You got to hit the thumbs up. Hide the chat. Hit the thumbs up. All right. So right now, in the beginning of June, we're at a period of time where the Federal Reserve has indicated we're pausing interest rates. Now, I know the federal chairman is saying they're anticipating, at least they're anticipating two more hikes this, this year, right? I say bullshit. I'm calling his bluff. Okay, and I don't even want to go into the fundamentals that I've spoken to about how there's a lot of zombie banks out there that are literally insolvent. They have so many unrealized losses. Okay, let's not even go down that path. All right, let's just stick to the charts. Yeah, he's going to increase the interest rates, even though all these banks are going to go under. I hear you. So here we are. We've paused interest rates. Now, the question we want to ask ourselves is when the Federal Reserve has paused interest rates in the past, what has happened? Well, we paused interest rates here at this point in time, okay? If we flash forward in from March 19 all the way to September 19, in September 19, in the beginning of September 19, the Federal Reserve signaled we're decreasing interest rates, okay? As soon as, now this is very important that you understand this. I want you to understand not just what the Federal Reserve signaled, but what was the reaction from the, what happened in the market? Was the market bullish or bearish after this had been reported? So at this point in time, in early September of 2019, when the Federal Reserve said, hey, we're decreasing interest rates, look what happened. We went up a little, and then we fell apart. We fell apart, and this was the beer virus. By the way, if you want to tell me this was a black swan event, Part of me agrees with you, but part of me also disagrees with you. If you study the repo market, you knew that there were things going on behind the scenes in mid to late 2019 that gave you a precursor to this, that there was something brewing, something bad was about to happen, right? So again, two things to take away from this. Number one, when we paused, the next action by the Federal Reserve was not to increase. It was to decrease interest rates. We decreased... Uh, looks like six months later. After six months, what happened in the market? It went up a little bit, and then we had a monumental decrease and freaked everyone out. I was buying crypto massively in this area. I was buying the fuck out of crypto. I couldn't, couldn't thank my fingers for moving fast enough, all right? Now, what does the green horizontal line indicate? This indicates that we were pausing the decline in interest rates. As soon as we paused again, you can see that the market uh, continued going higher for a period of time. Okay, now, let's go back in time for the second occurrence. In 
July of 2006, this is when the Federal Reserve paused interest rate hikes, similar to the time we are at today. Let's fast forward 11 months. 11 months later, in August of 2007, the Federal Reserve announced that they were decreasing interest rates. Again, the next action after a pause, which was 11 months later, was not an increase in rates. It was a decrease in rates. As soon as the decrease was announced, look what happened. The market continued moving. You can see we continued moving higher here during the pause. We continued moving higher for several weeks, and then we sharply sold off, okay? This was the great financial crisis, okay? CBG was just a young buck going through the student program, studying his actuarial exams, getting credentialed as an actuary, okay? CBG was protected, thankfully, by the student program, it didn't have any job security issues. A lot of people lost jobs, okay? The point is, after the rate decrease was signaled, very shortly thereafter, there was a monumental decrease in the stock market, okay? Now, this is the time period where we paused the decrease in rates, and you can see we started moving up. All right, one more time. Let's go back in time. Now, this one's interesting. In this case... In June of 2000, this is the dot-com bubble. In June of 2000, after the market had topped, after the market had topped, you can see that we paused increasing rates. This is what the orange line signifies, similar to where we were at today. Six months later in December of 2000, we signaled a decrease of interest rates. Okay, so again, once again, three for three. The next action after a Fed pause in interest rates, decrease. And look what happened to the market. We actually started going down before the decrease. We had already topped over here. We continued to decrease. We, can, we decreased monumentally in the stock market before, again, this is the signaling of the pause, no more decreases, and then we continued going up. There's a couple things that I personally would take away from this. Number one. Of the three past occurrences, when the Federal Reserve has paused interest rate increases, the next action was a decrease in interest rates. That is number one. Number two, a decrease in interest rates occurred anywhere between when the, the, the Fed had signaled that. We stayed paused for any time between six to 11 months. So... In between 6 to 11 months in these three occurrences, we remained paused, and then we started decreasing afterwards interest rates. That's point number two. Point number three, there was not a single time of these three events, and I just chose these three events. We could go further back in time, and you'd find them very similar things. There was not a single time where when the Fed indicated a pause in interest rates, sometime there was a lag. Okay, We went up a little here. Sometimes we had already topped. Okay? little lag here. We continue to go up a little here. But every single time, it was a warning shot. When the Federal Reserve indicates that they're decreasing interest rates, equity markets eventually, even if there's a lag in time by several weeks, a couple months, there is a significant drop in equity markets. And crypto is not going to be immune to that, guys. How many times have I signaled to you how many times have I signaled to you the positive correlation which exists between equity markets and crypto? We've looked at it in detail in prior live streams. You got to go back to those live streams, okay? Crypto is a risk on asset. No one wants to touch crypto if it's not a risk on environment. Well, how do we know if it's a risk on environment? It's a risk on environment. Investors are willing to take more risk and throw their money in the stock market, retail investors included, okay? When the stock market's doing well, no one wants to miss out on the stock market. Shit, the stock market's going up. I'm, I'm smart. I'm just going to throw all my money in these stocks and crypto. I know what I'm doing. That's when it's a risk on environment, right? That's when things become frothy and the smart money begins taking money off the table, okay? Uh, there's smart money and there's not smart money, okay? There's one more key point I would make from this, okay? And one could argue it could be at the point we're at within the cycle of the stock market, but regardless, it's a key item. 
At any point when we had it, look, at any point when we signaled a decrease in interest rates, decrease in interest rates, decrease in interest rates, okay? Between, I should signal, it's probably better to signal it this way. Between the pause and the decrease, at any points between the orange and the red lines, do you see the stock market making a new all-time high? So that is one tidbit of information that flies in the face of me saying the stock market is going to make new all-time highs this year, at latest next year, but I believe this year the stock market is going to make all, new all-time highs. This is the NASDAQ, okay? That's one thing that flies in the face of that. I still believe that based on where we're at, we are going to make new all-time highs in the stock market, but we'll have to see what happens. Maybe we get a double top. There's all, there's all sorts of probabilities. Now, what is, this is very important also if you followed everything that I said, okay? What I'm projecting here is when the Federal Reserve is going, and I want you to listen to what the red horizontal lines indicate and then what the key takeaway is. I understand that I have a thesis, okay, about this, or maybe we do this, okay? That is my main hypothesis. Unless if something materially changes, that is my main hypothesis. Well, unless something materially changes. The question is, what happens if the rate, the Fed, signals a rate decrease and Bitcoin's sitting at $60,000? I'm going to be a lot more leery about Bitcoin going to 100000 plus. And I'll tell you why. Because, again, every time we have signaled a rate decrease, the market has turned over. Okay? So... Couple things to take away from this. First off, what are these red horizontal lines? I have a red horizontal line in December, at the beginning of December of 23, and a red horizontal line in the beginning of July of 2024. These represent the ranges. When we look at the past three events, when the Federal Reserve has signaled a rate decrease, remember it was between six to 11 months after we paused. Six to 11 months projected out from our pause at the current state in June is between December and July of 2024, okay? So I've signaled the range here. Based on the prior three occurrences, what I'm telling you is I believe there's a very high likelihood that what's going to happen is the Federal Reserve is going to signal a, a decrease no increases, guys. No, again, there is a probability that there's going to be an increase in Fed rates, but it's very low. We've already talked about this. Federal Reserve will signal a decrease in interest rates sometime between December of 2023 this year and July of 2024. Now, obviously, based on a sample size of three, there's a high level of variability with that. Right, and if I'm losing you in statistical mumbo jumbo, just follow me. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, translate it in layman's terms. Because there's not many occurrences, there's a lot more variability with it. Right, it's not like I'm looking at a hundred events. I'm looking at three events. Right, so there's a lot more variability with that. It's not what we call in statistics statistically significant. Okay. So maybe we pause a month or two earlier. Maybe we pause in November. Maybe we pause in October. Maybe we pause in August way out here or September of 2024. I'm, I'm very open to that idea. But what I'm attempting to do based on the past three occurrences is create a range. And I think that's very logical. Thumbs up. Appreciate the support. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, you got to hide the comments. What's the dotted line? What's going on with the dotted line? Well, I'm sure you could probably guess this. The dotted line is simply a straight average. I'm just taking the three occurrences. I'm taking an average and saying, okay, well, the average is, it looks like February of 24, okay? But the main point is, what I take away from this, what I personally take away is, and I'd give a two-month, I'm going to throw out a two-month deviation, okay? So really, any time between October of 2023 and September of 2024, I anticipate the Federal Reserve to, paw, uh, to decrease interest rates. And I'd be willing to bet it's going to be on the earlier side of that. Okay, somewhere, I'd be willing to bet it's going to be somewhere in this area. Somewhere in this area is where we're going to decrease. Now, that's key takeaway number one. Key takeaway number two, based on history, we know, and this is the most important point, Based on history, we know there isn't favorable responses from equity markets 
when we have decreased interest rates. So the other thing I'm gonna be very keenly aware of is where is crypto at? Where is the stock market at when we announce these decreases in interest rates, okay? Uh, I can say I'm hopeful. I am hopeful and there's a lag. It's not like, and if you followed what I'm saying, it's not like if we go up to these levels here and we announce a decrease in interest rate, the stock market's just gonna start plummeting down. If you followed my entire analysis, no. Sometimes we've peaked before the paw. Uh, sometimes we've peaked before the decrease. Sometimes we've continued up and then started to decrease uh, after the, de the decrease in interest rates. But I do plan to use this information to discern where crypto and equity markets are at. And you guys know, look, I'm live streaming every day. So I'm gonna be transparent with you and my views on the markets. But there's a possibility this could change my opinion in terms of where crypto is going, okay? So at the very least, I will tell you this, at the very least, when the Federal Reserve announces that they're decreasing interest rates, I'm gonna to start to be a lot more conservative with my viewpoints, okay? I don't know if that means taking 30% off the table based on where we're at, take, starting to take 20 or 30% of my crypto off the table into cash. I don't know what that means today, but I'm at least saying to you, the data suggests to me that when we pause, look, again, just to reiterate, not when we pause, excuse me, after we start to decrease after a pause, Yes, we can go up, sharp decline. Here, yes, we can go up for a little bit, sharp, sharp decline for many, for a couple of years. Here, we've already topped. We already started declining and we'll just continue declining. So I see this data and I say, look, when the Federal Reserve starts announcing they're decreasing rates, I'm gonna be a lot more conservative with how I'm looking at things. And you guys, in my opinion, not financial advice, it would well suit you to be as well. You have to be open to the idea and maybe things will line up. I'm still, the way I look at things, I just, based on this Elliott wave structure, based on everything I've signaled to you, all these charts we've looked at, I still think that things are gonna line up in a way, whether we top this year, whether we top next year. The way I'm looking at these charts, I still think things are gonna line up such that we're topping some point near the rate decrease announcement and then we start getting the lower lows and lower highs. Maybe we get a little bit of a pop going into the halving, but eventually, I mean, it's a sell the news event. I think no matter how, also I've reiterated this, I think no matter how everything lays out, the halving, the halving, however you want to pronounce it, in my opinion, that is going to be a sell the news event. Guys, thumbs up. So what you gonna do, Yacht Dollar, or Crypto Bull guy, and his Crypto Maniac, and the entire cryptocurrency market run wild? Oh, 